So I've had the honor of photographing several books the last couple years, including my own. And with each book that I shoot, I learn something new. So I thought I'd take the chance here today and share with you some of those top lessons learned, as well as answer some of your awesome questions that y'all sent in from Instagram. <laughs> What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. Like I mentioned today we're talking about books and usually when it's food photography and books that means cookbooks. There's some really great questions I posted recently on Instagram. I said hey what questions do you have about photographing books whether that be like the creative, the technical, the business side. I got tons of great questions so let's go ahead and let's just dive on in. So very first question was, how much freedom do you have with the styling and does the author dictate it? So this is all about the art direction in a cookbook and this really completely depends. So for example, this book, Phoenix Cooks, which we photographed in 2019, came out in 2020. Christina Beretta, one of my friends was the author and it was put together by Figure One Publishing. And so in this situation, we had an art director, which is something that makes the job a whole lot easier, I think, in shooting shooting a book is when you have somebody who can cast that creative vision. So Naomi was the art director for this book. She did a phenomenal job and she had a really strong vision for the kinds of colors that she wanted to see and the kind of lighting that she wanted to see, had a lot of inspiration images. She put together all the mood boards for us. In that case, it's really helpful for me as a photographer. And you know, it's not to say that I didn't weigh in and have some opinions and thoughts and that the author also was involved in the creative side, but really at the end of the day, most of that creative direction all came from the art director, as opposed to my book, which I was the art director, I was the photographer, I was the cook, I was the stylist, the dishwasher, all the things, which is a lot more work. Now it's a lot of fun for sure if you enjoy art direction, that you can certainly do both, be the art director and the photographer, but it is going to be more work. And I have shot other cookbooks where I played both roles. So that's always a question that I'll ask when I'm putting together that estimate is to understand is there an art director involved who's going to be the one dictating the creative vision you know certainly the author may have some preferences in terms of colors and style and things like that but at the end of the day unless you've got somebody who's a professional art director a lot of that responsibility is going to fall to you so it's just something to think about in terms of budgeting your time knowing that putting together things like mood boards and pulling inspiration images and doing image research that takes a lot of time Time. And so just thinking about that as you're budgeting for your estimate. All right, so next question is about the shot list. Is it more about process shots or about that final hero shot? Well, again, this really kind of depends. Certainly if there's an art director involved, they'll have some strong opinions about this. Also might depend on the budget of how many images are gonna be included in the book and what kind of book is it? Is it more about like step-by-step -step instructional stuff or is it really just about those final dishes? So again, these are all questions that you'll ask in that planning process, not only in creating the estimate so that you understand the scope of the project, but then when you get into that planning process, which I would say like the planning of a cookbook shoot takes just as much time, if not more than the actual shoot itself. And so thinking about things like that. Now, that being said, I always look for opportunities when there's just like a little extra shot that we can grab or like a little like detail shot. A great example of this actually, in Phoenix Cooks, we had this shot that we were lining up that the chef, uh, she would have her hands involved and that we had the paella there. But then kind of like real quick, I was like, I just feel like I just need like a beauty shot of this. Like this was intended to be our final image, but I went in and I just grabbed this little guy right here. And this ended up then being kind of like that big stunner shot of the whole spread for that particular recipe and other little like detail shots like this. Because inevitably when we're working with a publisher, sometimes they'll just need like a little extra something to fill in there and fill in there. So always just kind of being mindful of, is there some other opportunity for me to grab a shot that can be one of like those ancillary images that aren't necessarily the hero, but can absolutely add to the storytelling. Again, depending on the shot list and the scope of the project and how many hands you have. Again, if you're running the job of art director and stylist and all the things, then you may not have as much time for those little like peripheral shots. But in this situation, we had the art director, we had me, I had assistants, we had a stylist, 
playlist. So we had all these extra hands that I had the freedom and time to grab those little extra shots. And that's really, you know, when people ask, because I think that's a question coming up here next, is when do you enlist a stylist? And I would say a stylist is incredibly helpful. First of all, if there are foods that you just know are gonna be difficult or challenging, or if there are things that you know you can't do, but more so having a stylist is about freeing you up so that you can really focus on the photography and that you can accomplish a lot more in the course of a day. When we shot Phoenix Cooks, now granted this was 50 different chefs, and but we also had a stylist who was helping the chefs. So thinking about the context of this, we were shooting nine a day, which is aggressive, that's a lot, but all of the food prep was done offsite and they were just plating final dishes. Whereas when I shot my book, which again, let's talk about being a perfectionist too and how that can slow down your process. I was shooting one to two a day. So because it was just me doing everything, doing all the cooking, all the shopping, all the prep. So that just takes a lot more time when you just only have one person as opposed to a team, you can get through a lot more, a lot faster. All right, so next question, super popular question is what do you charge to photograph a cookbook? And I would say, well, what kind of cookbook are we photographing? Little cookbook, big cookbook, a lot of photographs, few photographs, what kind of food are we photographing? How many people are gonna be involved? What's the scope of the project, right? Because it's like going to a home builder and saying, what does it cost to build a home? <laughs> and they go, do you want a big home, little home, marble countertops, not marble countertops? Like these are all things that we have to understand what's the scope of the project in order to put together a proper estimate. There's not a one size fits all when it comes to photographing cookbooks. Now I promise, and this has been a long time coming, but I'm working on some resources currently that will help you in understanding your pricing, how to really distill down some of these decisions and the questions we need to ask, all the things that go into putting together a commercial photography estimate. But the very first place I suggest you start, and it might be a little scary, but it's an important first question. They may not tell you an answer, but always ask, what's your budget? Because for me, like there's a certain amount of time and effort that goes into putting together an estimate. And if they they tell me, okay, it's gonna be $5,000 budget for 50 images, I'm gonna go, we're not even in the same ballpark. Like this is not even gonna be worth my time to put together an estimate. And it's not cause I'm like all sorts of fabulous and fancy and charge super expensive rates for photographing cookbooks. It's because you just think about the scope of the time. Like a cookbook is a massive project. It is going to take up a lot of your time, a lot of your creative energy. And so thinking about that, understanding that it's more than just shooting it's all the planning, it's all the coordination, it's all the setup and prep. Like I think about a cookbook shoot is that I actually spend more time in the planning process than I actually do shooting the cookbook. And so understanding that scope and every little bit of time that you'll be putting toward that project that you can't be with your family, that you can't be doing other work, working for other clients, you need to account for that. And so you think about like what it's gonna take time-wise and resources-wise to photograph 50 different shots and you you think, yeah, no, $5,000 isn't even gonna cover like the cost of food, <laughs> much less than my time, my creativity and expertise, all the things. So when I'm putting together an estimate for a cookbook, I'll really assess and like start to think through, okay, if we're gonna do this many setups and we're gonna need this many days and it's this certain kind of amount of complexity, like we can start to put together those numbers and start to think about what that's gonna take in terms of time. Now also a part of that estimate, I wanna think about the expenses, like what are things that I'm gonna to have to pay for or purchase in order to execute this shoot. So again, going back to Phoenix Cooks, I needed to hire assistants because I'm paying the assistants and I needed to hire a stylist too. I paid the stylist, right? We think about are there other specialty props or surfaces or things that we're gonna to need to purchase for this shoot? Are we gonna to need to rent gear? Are we gonna to need to rent a space? Like all these different things start to add up. So thinking through the potential expenses that will go along with that shoot. And then the final part of the estimate estimate equation being any sort of like usage or licensing of those images. Now this, you know, really kind of depends. This is where we have the most flexibility in all situations when it comes to photography. But I think about like, if I'm going to charge licensing, it has to first a deal with the notoriety of the personality that's involved in that. So if I'm shooting, like if I shoot a cookbook for Rachel Ray, <laughs> 
definitely going to put some licensing in there, right? Because you think about just like how many eyeballs and the usage of those images and how they want to use those images that we want to charge appropriately for that. Although now I'm also sitting here thinking like if Rachel Ray came to me and said, can you shoot my cookbook? I'd say I, whatever you want, right? <laughs> so, sometimes our compensation is not always monetary. And a lot of times cookbooks are not necessarily going to be the most lucrative projects that they are going to be much more passion projects because you can have a lot more fun, the creativity, all the aspects of collaboration, working with other people. So, you know, you have to weigh what is most valuable and important to you. But to me, at the end of the day, I always come back to making sure that my expenses are covered and accounted for, as well as the amount of time that it's going to take me to do it. And please do not underestimate how time intensive a cookbook is. You think about photographing 50 recipes as a lot of time. All right, so next question, is color accuracy important and how do you ensure the colors will look on your computer like they will look on the page? So first and foremost, making sure to work from a calibrated monitor. And I've got a video all about this if you've never calibrated your monitor. It's not hard, you just gotta have the right device for it. But that's gonna be important whether you're shooting for books or for web, doesn't matter, like calibrate those monitors. And if you haven't done it in a while and this is your helpful reminder to do it, that's gonna be a good baseline. But as far as like the actual specs of the image, this is where then we start to ask a lot of questions because it's all going to depend on the needs of that publisher and the printer that they're using. So asking like what's the file type that they need. Now most publishers that I've worked with at this point all wanted the high resolution TIFF files. So that's going to be an important you know export setting to use. And then in terms of color space my default is generally for print work is going to be Adobe RGB. Also making sure that the camera in terms of the color space setting settings is Adobe RGB because I'm not going to get into like color space. That's a whole other <laughs> video, but just knowing that there's a lot more variety available in terms of colors and tones available in Adobe RGB versus the compressed version of sRGB, which is intended for web. So shooting in Adobe RGB and then exporting in that as well, but also asking questions. You know, I think so many times we get like as photographers, we're like, I'm supposed to know all these things. No, you're not supposed to know all these things. You're supposed to ask these questions. To me, that's the mark of a true professional is somebody who's not too proud to ask like, what is it you need? Because every publisher, every situation, it might be different and you don't want to just assume because this is what we always do. You want to make sure that that's actually what they need. All right, so next question is, where can I find someone who wants to write a book so I can shoot it for them? That's like the big hard question, right? Because I don't think it's like a linear path to say, if you do this, you're going to get to shoot a cookbook. Like there's not a formula there. What I will say though is that all of the cookbooks I've ever shot have come out of knowing somebody, having a relationship, and the networking that I've done over the years. You know, I think about shooting for Christina, that when I started doing food blogging, well, I connected with other local food bloggers and with different local agencies, and so then I started to make friends. So that then when it came time for Christina to write her cookbook, I was the first person she thought of to do the food photography because she knows I'm a food photographer. And the same goes for the other cookbook opportunities that I've had over the years, that it's usually come out of the fact that I knew somebody and they knew I was a food photographer and they liked me and they pulled me in. Now you can certainly pitch yourself and send your portfolio to, you know, the art director or the editor at a publisher and start getting your name out that way. But again, I find for me personally, and I know for a lot of other food photographers who shot cookbooks, it's come just out of happenstance of knowing somebody who ended up shooting a cookbook and getting in that way. So, but you think about like, who are the people who write cookbooks? In this day and age, it's gonna be food bloggers and other food personalities, people with a following. So where do those people hang out? Are there conferences? Are there organizations? Are there places that you can plug into to start to make those relationships and connections so that, you know, down the line. But what I will say too, is once you've done a cookbook or you've done a couple, you've gotten a couple under your belt, it is kind of amazing how then people start to see, oh, she shoots cookbooks and that turns into referrals or maybe you have a great experience with a publisher and they refer you out to someone else. So it's like that snowball effect. But if you're not out there advertising the fact and letting people know, hey, I'm a food photographer, that's gonna be your first step. All right, so next question is, what's your favorite part of the process? The favorite part of the process is <laughs> when these delicious little books show up and you're like, oh, look at all that hard work all in one place. <laughs> I mean, it is so fulfilling. Cause I will tell you every single cookbook I've ever 
ever shot, there's always been a moment, and maybe I, don't, I have to think other people have experienced this too, but there's always this moment in the midst of the shoot when I'm like, why am I doing this? This is hard work, <laughs> this is painful, this is scary, this is like all the things, right? There's like a lot of emotions to, for me wrapped up in executing these kinds of works. And so when it's like finally delivered and you see it show up and you can hold it, I mean, that there is nothing like opening that box and you're like, oh, there it is. In case you missed it, that totally happened when my book showed up for the first time on my doorstep. I didn't know it was coming and I just like opened this like box thinking it was something from Amazon and there it was. I'll link, I made a little reaction video on Instagram because I was like the only person home. I was by myself. I was like in my sweats, like not looking cute at all, but I was like, oh, this is like this momentous moment and here it is and it's happening right now. So if you missed that video, I've got a link down below. All right, so next question is, how do you break up the schedule? Well. Well, it really kind of depends, again, on the scope of the project, the situation, are you renting space? Like if you're renting space and you've got like, you know, a clock going in the back of your mind, like we only have so many days or whatever, like you're gonna have to know, like and do the math of like how much needs to be accomplished in a day. In general, you know, with a team, with a stylist, a photographer, like the whole kit and caboodle, like six to seven, maybe eight shots in a day can be accomplished. But that is going to depend too on like how complicated the food is, how many different setups we're going to need, how many different shots we're going to need out of every different setup. But I kind of like gauge it based on six to seven to eight in a day. Nine, like when we did Phoenix Cooks, that I like there was alarm bells going off in my mind thinking nine is a lot. And the food stylist, when I told her that, she's like, nine is a lot. <laughs> but we were able to accomplish that again because there were so many hands involved and the publisher did such a great job of like really streamlining that process and they had done it in other cities so we knew it would work. But then thinking about Crazy Sweet Creations, it was just me and then a pastry chef and he had like a very specific schedule. And two, because like all of those desserts in Anne's book were so elaborate, we could only do so many in a day. And two, we were kind of of negotiating the weather because there's a lot of like specialty chocolates and like sculpted chocolates and ice cream and things like that and we didn't want to be shooting those in like the hundred degree days of when we first started the shoot so that one actually took course of like over the course of like five or six weeks so you know it is nice when a cookbook can be kind of banged out over the course of a couple days but you know that is going to again going to require a certain amount of just logistics and teamwork and different people working together to accomplish that now i know there are folks who've shot cookbooks like for bloggers who they do all the cooking all the styling all the shopping all the everything and i would say like you can get two to three recipes done in a day and that's with maybe like a half day of prep ahead of time. And so if you kind of do the math, like, okay, if I need to do 50 recipes and I can do two to three a day, then you can do the math <laughs> and figure out how many days that's gonna take you. But also knowing like to go continuously hard for like that many days in a row, that can get exhausting. You're gonna need like some rest days, some breaks in between. So again, really depends, asking all those really good questions, understanding, are you gonna be alone? Are you gonna have help? How complicated does all this work? How much can we get done in the course of a day and over the course of a week? All right, so next question, as far as lighting is concerned, favorite topic. Is it better to use artificial or natural? Is it okay to combine artificial and natural? Are we going more for hard light or soft light? Well, let me attack from a stylistic perspective first. So that is gonna go back to that conversation about who's doing the art direction. If you're doing the art direction and you're communicating with the author and you know whoever the stakeholders are involved, understanding what's the lighting and what's the story that we're trying to tell. So for example, in Phoenix Cooks, the art director, Naomi, she was like, you know, Arizona, it's like hard light, it's dramatic. So there's a lot of hard light images in there, but we did pepper in some soft light. Like there's not, you don't necessarily have to say, okay, this is all gonna be hard light or this is all gonna be soft light. Like that's really, again, up to that art direction style. Now, hard light, certainly super popular right now. If you go to, like I was at Barnes and Noble last week, just checking out cookbooks and there's like, a whole lot of hard light going on, which is great. But that's not to say that we're not gonna see plenty of soft light happening as well. But then as far as like artificial versus natural, and I mean, this is a completely biased opinion, right? Because I am artificial light freak, so. <laughs> 
I, all the cookbooks I shoot anymore are all artificial light. But you know, that's really gonna, again, depend on what is your style? What, are you getting hired for a signature style and you are a natural light shooter and that's what you're known for and that's gonna be super important, then great. But I will say because of just the length of shoot days and the volume of work that's being done and over the course of multiple days and just because you know I like to minimize unpredictability as much as possible when we're working with a lot of people or things like things that go into a book that I find artificial light helpful. Now, are there situations where you can combine the artificial and natural, like some shots are natural light, some shots are artificial, absolutely. Like in Phoenix Cooks, for example, I shot artificial for the food and for the portraits, but then all the interiors at the restaurants, that was just available light, natural light, and worked with that. So I would say it depends, but you don't for sure want something that's gonna look so jarringly different. You know, you do want a certain amount of cohesion and consistency throughout the book so that the images look like they go together in a collection. So as long as you can strike that balance and make sense of that, if you're combining natural, artificial, that's up to you, or that's up to the art director. All right, so then along those same lines is how do you create consistency and cohesion throughout the book? Well, we've talked about having a good game plan and the art direction and the lighting and all that jazz, but then something else that is super helpful and that you'll see happen with a lot of cookbook shoots is that then as you're shooting everything, printing out or posting or having some sort of organized way to see all the images together. So as I was shooting Anne's book that each each image as it was completed, you know, I do like a rough edit on it just to get it kind of close enough and then plug it into a grid, some sort of way to lay that out just so that we can see, okay, here's how they all look together and kind of understanding, okay, well, you know, if we're doing like pinks and blues and yellows, but we don't want like everything all right here, kind of like all looking exactly the same, like we want to kind of mix it in, thinking about the pagination of the images that you want that similarity, but variety. And so the same thing, like when we were shooting Phoenix cooks and Naomi was plugging all of those images into a grid so then we can see okay like we've done two in a row that have been overhead so this next one really should be like a three-quarter or a head-on and okay now we've used this background like five times maybe we need to you know change it up a little bit here again that's all going to depend on the expectations of the art direction and you know how much visual variety is desired maybe everything shot overhead and that's the style you're going for so there's not necessarily like one right way to do it but by being able to see all those images together that just definitely helps so that as you continue to create them then it can give you some ideas for like okay this next shot if it's going to be next to this one and next to this one in the course of the book here's some other things that I may want to think about all right so next question how important is a high res camera and I would say do you mean like a medium format camera you don't you don't need a medium format camera no I like I've never actually even shot with a medium format camera maybe this will be the year maybe I'll you know get my life together but I would say I've never needed one like I've never shot anything that required that size right and so in terms of resolution now if you've missed the video I do have one published a number of weeks ago about understanding megapixels and how to do the math and everything I've got that link down below but you know I think back to like my first cookbook and marshmallow heaven by Trisha and that was shot on a Canon 70d crop sensor camera 18 megapixels no problem no problem at all so you don't need giant files so so any, I would say any modern DSLR or mirrorless is going to be just fine, but do just make sure to ask the questions about, you know, what is the resolution that they're looking for in terms of when the publisher says they want high resolution images, can they help to define that in terms of what's that size so that then you can work within those parameters. So the next question, how do we know if we should shoot horizontal or vertical, or do you shoot both, see what works? And for this, for the most part, once we're getting to the photography process of a book, they've already got sort of a plan in terms of the publisher, or whoever's doing the layout, like there's already sort of a tentative plan for that layout. So they know that, okay, this image needs to be horizontal, this image needs to be vertical. When we were shooting Anne's book, we literally like, we were working from the layout, we knew this page was gonna be spread across two pages, this image, and so we don't want the subject dead in the center, and then we're gonna have some writing over here in the upper left, so let's make sure to keep that open. So we had all of that ahead of time, and that's for the most part gonna be the case with most books. There's already gonna be a plan for that layout, so you're not having to come up with that game plan. That being said, it never hurts to, if it's easy enough to shoot a vertical 
orientation of something you were shooting horizontal or to get some other quick detail shots because you never know like that may end up being used in another way in the book or could end up being used on the cover there's all sorts of different things so when you have opportunities to grab additional orientations or layouts or perspective go for it but they for the most part should be dictating to you what that layout should be but so those are just some of the experiences that I've had in shooting books I'm sure I'll learn even more lessons like every shoot is a new opportunity to learn something but if you've shot for books or cookbooks or magazines editorial before and you've got some advice for us to share feel free to use the comment section below so we can all learn together but with that I hope you have a fantastic day you stay out of trouble I'll see you soon okay bye